coming out here and uh, working on the watershed, uh, you have control of the quality of the water that you have. This is an urban creek running through this uh, redwood preserve. This portion of the creek, this 50 or 60 feet here, it gets a lot of force from the runoff. So it erodes heavily and is liable to undermine these uh, pathways and concrete structures. It's our intention that it grow and become a habitat uh, structure with dense vegetation and places for birds to, uh, to find shelter. Art is a very important way to reach people and I knew that we wanted to have art as part of this. And I knew about Dan and McCormick's work. Uh, someone suggested that I show it to Junko here at the Redwood Grove and Junko fell in love with it as well. So here we are today about to engage in a public art project where the art's made out in public by you, the public. The materials are pretty traditional restoration materials for doing restoration naturally, but in terms of adding that aesthetic component, it's really unique and I think it creates something for a community to gather around. This particular spot, I don't know if any of you were here when we did this work, but um, it used to look like this picture here. Um, and this stuff was good 20 feet tall. It's Arondo donax. It's an invasive plant that's pretty commonly found along streams. But we wanted to get it out of here. So we had some volunteers come hack it all down. And then we covered it with a tarp for actually about a year. We wanted to block sunlight, basically. So we're starving the roots of sunlight so that it won't grow anymore. We took it off about a month ago. There was not much Arundo left to speak of, so it, I think it did its job and hopefully we won't see any more of it poking up through this sculpture. Because we had removed all this vegetation, obviously we want to get something going on this bank. So we cut some stakes, we cut some branches to weave together and then we threw them over and pounded them in so they're right in the bank. So the, the first ones that are in the bank we, we did December 17th. So we Daniel showed us how he was weaving in the, the willow branches. And then we'll start Take making waddles. And we make waddles. So we just use everything. And if you don't, if the thing's sticking out, you know, then you just trim it. I'm going to trim her to do this. So that the waddles could potentially root. And we're going to get rain next week, which we're very excited about. And so some of these little guys, we like thicker stakes, of course, because the thicker the, the, the bigger the, um, the stake, the more stored energy it has, and you can see even in our milk bottles over there, the big stake is really pushing out big roots, <laughs> and the little stake is pushing out little roots. They're both even in the terms of growing. But um, when you bunch a little of these together, they kind of protect each other, keep each other moist, and these have the potential to root as well. So we're creating a shield of native plants and we're actually using willow branches and weaving them. We're using redwood branches, old Christmas trees. Oh, it smells good. <laughs> yeah, it does smell good, doesn't it? Uh -huh. Jump on it real hard and seed it down. That's perfect. That'll start to grow if it gets enough water and enough light. So, we're staking in willow, which actually will grow back into a tree uh, from a stick. You make sure that the root side, like the bottom side, is pointy and it is inside the soil. You're doing an amazing job. So this woven structure here is the armor and it's woven with live willow branches that are stuck into the ground. The experiments that were done last year by Junco are really promising. This is a classic willow stake and what it does is it when it's put in the ground it'll it'll develop roots and then send up shoots and now we have the making of a little willow tree. These weavings and these branches that we've put in the ground here have a good chance of re-establishing themselves. We're in what they what you can consider the dormant season where all plants are drop their leaves and they go to sleep for the winter and that's when we trim our willows. It's really harvesting. We we trim the same species that grows in the grove 
from this watershed, this greater watershed. Weaving it is very easy at that point. It's still a green shoot. Uh, we can bend it and curve it, and so we do uh, work it into a shape that not only covers the shape of the bank, but it's actually pleasing to us. The shape of the work is, uh, is based on the uh, height of the flow, which is indicated by that level line over there. The water is going to, to come up here at a, at a maximum flow. He has done enough of these where he plans not just for this year, but for big water events, um, and, and even low water. So we're planting willows right down into the creek bed because if we don't get more rain this year, those will be the ones that really will thrive versus the ones up here because this bank will eventually dry out. Native plants, we, we want to keep the same genetic species of plants for several reasons. Um, it's part of the web, the ecological web. Uh, birds identify with the natives that, that were here historically. Um, the soil is adapted to it. They're adapted to drought once they get established. The aquatic environment, the fish and, and bugs, the uh, bugs from the trees, the uh, fish to the bugs, all this is webbed together. So there's a relationship between this vegetation right here and this becoming a thicket and a habitat for birds and the kinds of insects that these plants will attract are the kinds of insects that these native fish will eat. And th so that goes back around in a circle that these birds are feeding on these fish right here that are feeding on the insects from the vegetation of their habitat. Pretty good. Wow, nice. It looking okay? Yep. All right. All right. Great. Living water sculpture. So that's what captivated us. You don't have to.